And we talk about the West Coast Eagles, we'll have a look at their side in a moment, but the Swans have got some new blood as well. And uh, they've really contributed to the side in the first three weeks. Yeah, they sure have, and been very, very important as we go through the Swans side now. Canelli, how important is it? There's a healthy addition there. Canelli fit and firing with his run off the back line. He's just super important to this Swan side. And there's Craig Bolton on the half-back flank there, and he is in all Australian form again. Just been absolutely super on the key forwards. Brett Kirk, well, he's consistent, but it's been Jared really McVay good, yeah. who's really stood up so far this year. Absolutely brilliant. And there's some old stages there that have just performed year in, year out, and they're ever reliable. And Barry Hall has been the man we've been talking about. Ultra consistent, good to see him back in form. And Brennan's in uh, late inclusion for Grundy. And there's Adam Goods. Adam yeah, Goods has been a bit problem. slow, hasn't he? Yeah, he hasn't hit his form straps just yet, but we do measure him by very lofty standards. As we see some of the new guys, Ed Barlow, who's just playing a little bit of game time at the moment, and Cameron Bird also, who's uh, only a young guy, just been injected into the team. Well, the good news for the West Coast Eagles is that Dean Cox is playing, and what a year he's having. He's averaging 25 disposals, 7 marks, 5 clearances and 22 hit-outs. There's been even some rumours this week he's got a hairline fracture of the foot when he collided with the Punda last week, but I'm sure he wouldn't be playing if that was the case. Well, he couldn't be. I don't think the Dockers would risk this man. With the players that are missing in this West Coast outfit, the last thing that they can afford is Dean Cox out for half the year. They really need him up and going. And uh, let's have a look at the West Coast Eagles lineup. As I said, it's uh, a lot of new faces in this team. Yeah, it is, but the one thing that West Coast have been able to do pretty much is keep their defence intact. It's been their midfield has been decimated, and, you know, Darren Glass, Jones, Selwood, they're all there. It's just been in this midfield area where they've taken some punishment, and there's some new guys through that region. Daniel Kerr's really just stepped up. Um, doing it by himself Hanson at the moment. needs a big one tonight, doesn't he? Sure is, and there's some guys that really have to step up around him. As we see some new kids being played, McKinley and also Selwood. And Quinton Lynch, he just has to stand up. He really has to take some contested marks. And even a new look midfield. Stengline's been there for a while, but Bo Waters has moved from the halfback flank into the midfield. Staying and playing his first game tonight. And some new names again there. So a very different looking West Coast outfit. The last seven contests between the two teams have been decided by a total of just 25 points. And into battle, they go again, and it's Sydney's ball, but that is the sort of contest that typifies modern-day battles between West Coast and Sydney. Well, just an early match-up. Hearn is started in the midfield. Cox out there, which is heartening for the Eagles and getting the tap, but Moore has it for Sydney. Deliberated, delivered, just a little bit too strong for Bevan, who might have been a bit zealous. Rushing at it, We're and in the contest, too zealous in giving away 50. Hunter will come forward. Well, Jaron Glass is playing on Barry Hall, and we'll see why the 50 is given. Yeah, that's fair enough. Hunter probes. Lynch was on the lead, but it's Sydney's ball. Matner sweeping it to Ablett. Not a bad placement, and well done, Bevan. Returning for earlier sins. Has a call inside, but they tend to play the boundary until they get it to about this point of the ground. Hall absolutely preoccupied there with Glass. And Brett Jones has been an important player in contest against Sydney. Has O'Keefe again, as he has done the last few times. Lachlan into that contest, but it's the Eagles football. It was. Numbers against uh, McVeigh. He almost beat them all off. In the end, the Eagles threw Scott Selwood in his second game. Take it wide to Staker. And Hanson's at the end of it. Hold it there. Let him run. So we talked before the game, there's Lynch and also Hanson. They need big games tonight for West Coast if they're going to win. They've both been down. Hanson, that's a pretty ordinary handball. Put his teammate right under the pump. Not a good handball, was it? Straight line handball, set his teammate up, gives Sydney a chance to get numbers back. McVeigh got pushed in the back against Turn, and so McVeigh's got the free kick, and he's been in wonderful form, averaging 21 disposals and uh, four clearances in his first three matches for 2008. Goes back and deep to Barry. 
How many goals are we going to get tonight, Rob? Well, I think it'll be pretty tight early. I think Sydney will put the brakes on. They can play very good one-on-one -on -one football, but they have more than one game plan. And then I think once they've uh, put the choker hold on, they'll run away. I have a feeling that Sydney could easily once kick again, 16, 50, 18 goals. Not in the and that's another 50-metre penalty against the Swans. What uh, the West Coast need to do is get some marks inside their forward 50, and Hunter will take one. Good running. And he's bolted from behind the West Coast Eagles player with the ball. Now, they were caught napping there, Sydney. Hunter loves to push forward to kick goals. And he's done it on many occasions at crucial times for West Coast against Sydney. Two goals in his three matches this season, Adam Hunter. From right on 50. And the first score of the match goes West Coast way. And the Swans have numbers around the contest. Barry turning into trouble, just can't find a way out. Canelli does. Kicks beautifully with the left. Perfectly done to Bevan. Now Richards playing his 50th game for Sydney tonight. Jared McVeigh, brother injured last night for the Dons. Jolly, again, it's open up inside the 50, although the Indians are coming now. And O'Loughlin edging out. Adam Selwood legitimately will line them up. So O'Loughlin with a straightforward shot for the first goal of the night. And he delivers for the Swans. Hanson from outside 50. Still too far out. Good placement for the Eagles. Again, the Swans defence up to the challenge. Armstrong may have been touched high, not paid. And away goes the Irishman, Ty Canelli. And one of his irrepressible runs, a great placement for Hall. Able to edge out Glass. Kept the hands away from the back, used the body. Hall regards Glass as about his best opponent. And Lachlan beats off Staker, can go for his second and run it home. And Roberts Thompson, the relief oh. ruckman, up against Seabee, the relief ruckman. Bird got caught high. It's a good hard contest. Well, was the impromptu West Coast? Where do they get their goals from? As they see the great clash, their forwards aren't quite marking inside 50 at the moment. Mm. Where have they got to generate their score from? Well, I don't think they'll get them from their midfielders. We'll come back to it. Buchanan onto the left, a little short one. Barlow's in there. Back of the Packers, Hall got caught high. Free kick to Hall. Barry Hall, high. It was uh, an accident, but it was definitely high contact. Hall. Eight goals, nine this season. Been a bit off target, but he's having plenty of shots at goal, which is the encouraging factor. And that's right through the middle. Swan's got the flyer. They are a well-drilled team. Not 15. Barlow has to play on, and he does it coolly. Goods drops. A pud. And the Eagles should escape. Marston, Nikoski. Spanger, pressure on them though. Relayed free Lucky. kick. There will be a moment of respite. There's big, <laughs> big and bad. And there's his attack on the footy, and it just goes to show how debilitating injuries can be. We wouldn't have seen that last year with Barry Hall. He tried his heart out, but he just couldn't do it physically. And just to Ooh, see that is just fantastic. Swans play got put down. Sydney frees it. Matna. It was a shepherd off the ball. Well, good pick-up quarters. Marty Matna. I think he's a terrific pick-up for Sydney. Thank you. He's quick, links up well with handball, played 98 games for the Crows. And let's see if we can see it. Down the bottom right hand of side of screen. That's a pretty heavy shepherd. Matna is a lovely left foot kick. Well within range from 45 and he puts it through. The Swans have broken away. His kick finds O'Keefe. He goes right back into the middle and hits Canelli. Eagles pushing everyone in the back half. Everyone. Bolton. There's just nothing to kick to at the moment. As Hall oh, off the ball, Hall's... Oh! Barry Hall has whacked behind play. That is ridiculous, Barry Hall. He has smacked Staker in the head, and he will be reported. I saw that, and it was completely undisciplined. It was a left hand. Staker stood down, and it was a left hook, and it was...
was a very cheap shot off the ball, I have to say. It's oh. going to Well. Yeah. When he, West Coast free kick. Oh, it was a shocker. Well, he's let himself down completely there, Barry Hall. That is the sort of thing that we thought was out of his game. I think we thought that was out of the game, full stop, right? Yeah. Absolutely. That is just so disappointing. That is going to put a big hole in Barry Hall's season. Of that, there can be virtually no doubt. We don't want to prejudge, but we do have eyes. The Eagles still looking for their first goal. They get a rush behind. That was, uh, that's, yeah, and that doesn't make it any better. Is, that doesn't make it any better. Not good. Well, he'd be looking at uh, a minimum of five or six, I reckon, for that. What do you think, boys? Well, well that's a fair comment. It might be a conservative one. Here's Lynch for the Eagles. But the Swans' defence has been impeccable. The Swans' defence of their players at the tribunal is the best of anyone, but Perry Mason won't get him off that. Canelli, long clearance, jolly on the end of it. Oh, we're all oh, absolutely, I'm, this, I'm, is a, this is a sensation. I'm we're stunned. all absolutely stunned. I'm stunned. And there's just absolutely no need to do it. When was the last time we saw something like that in an AFL game? Oh, I, I think we're all looking at one another just we thinking, just we just it. can't believe we saw that. I suspect Hall can't believe he did it. But he's done it. What a sensation. Your ball, your ball there. It's hard not, hard not to get lost in it because it certainly affects Sydney's future, no doubt. They've got a mark in their forward 50, courtesy of a ill-directed switch of play by Sydney. Well, stake is stunned and so is everyone at the ground. It is a stunning bit of vision that our cameras have captured. McKinley it is, kicking the Eagles' first goal of the night. <laughs> no Cousins, no Judd, of course. And so much of the Eagles' midfield machine revolves around Kerr. Oh. Speaking of midfield machines, Adam Goods to McVeigh. Simple shot. Goal to Sydney, an important one for the Swans. That makes sense. Waters, oh, oh nice hip and shoulder on Barlow. That was a beauty. Well... He probably thinks they uh, need a few back to square up. Braun is working hard. Marston got stripped of the footy. Barlow kicks towards O'Loughlin, who's in front of Spanger. Wants to get it moving quickly. O'Keefe's getting back into a hole, but he goes short of the goods. He's coming into the game. He says, get out of my way. I'm going to kick the goal. The big worry is Stengline can't go with him. Oh. McNamara centering ball to what? Hanson had to go the spoil, it eluded Lynch. And Craig Bolton, that former Brisbane Lion. To Buchanan, and it's all Sydney. Like Roberts Thompson has McVeigh short. Coming off the interchange bench, Scott Selwood was able to close the door for a moment, but McVeigh goes for O'Keefe oh. again. You'd back him and you'd win because he's put it right through the middle. The Swans are romping away from West Coast. And just repeating, we'll have more on that sensational first quarter incident in which uh, Hall flattened Brent Staker uh, during our half-time break. An analysis uh, will be asking questions such as whether this is likely to go straight to the tribunal. I'd imagine the match review panel will take it straight there. Meanwhile, CB's going to line up. But I think a fascinating part of all of this is that this is an era in which the AFL is so acutely conscious of the image of the game. As McKinley kicks the Eagles' second goal, the margin is back to 32. West Coast have got to hold up here. Play Cox on. lost his footing, Play that's on. dangerous. O'Keefe to Jolly. Just on. couldn't uh, move Play the on. vital parts Nothing of his body hand. quickly enough. Goods can, though. And it's Holding a free Brent kick Kirk. to Kirk. Well, oh, that's devastating for the Eagles. That looked a tough call. It did. Kirk will make them pay. He does. Margin 39 points. Playing his 102nd game of footy now. Well and truly established member of this team. 
Pops it inside 50, and that's a good mark taken by Jude Bolton. It's coming back, and it's through the middle. So a good start for Sydney this third term. They're in front now by a healthy 45. Possession to the Eagles, but for how long? Relentless pressure from Sydney. Jude Bolton, was he pushed? Yes, he was. Got himself over the ball. Wasn't a lot Cox could do. There's a target there for Bolton. He's a little slow getting there, but Jolly's got the big height advantage, and that's a free. 45, rather. And Jolly takes it into the 50s. It's a hammering. He is. That's a beautiful delivery by Cox inside 50, and it's marked by Armstrong. And there were times when there were criticisms of that because it meant it was too easy for O'Loughlin and Hall to have all of that space in front of them. Sometimes you thought it might be better to drop a player back there. Um, I just think he, the education is playing on some quality players. There are five young Eagles who, between them, have got a total of 11 games experience. So, big learning night for them. And that's a lovely kick from Stephen Armstrong, a badly needed goal for the West Coast Eagles. Doesn't really seem to be saying any, showing any signs of that sore foot, so that's good news for West Coast. Matner with his head over the ball. Got it out nicely. Richards waddles one to half forward. Selwood underneath it against Moore. Neither can mark. Selwood butters up. Not a great handle. Good hard work from Moore. Good run down on O'Keefe. He's still got it though. Over to Jack. Great team goal from the Swans. That's the way they're playing tonight. And the Eagles are feeling the full brunt of it. So McKinley for his third, and well done. One in each quarter. A little short one to Hunter. And good run out of defence by the first gamer in Spanger. Kicks inside 50. Now, which way is this going? Brennan yeah, against McKinley for a nudge out. To Roberts Thompson. Filling in for Spider River at the moment as the second ruckman. Well, Oops. that's just backing in your teammate. Yeah, what's he going to do here? Kicks towards O'Loughlin, uses the body. Too experienced, too good. Goal. His third. As Buchanan gets up very gingerly, Barry Hall's got it in the middle of the ground. Swans, interestingly, have uh, used only 24 players so far this year through four rounds. His own Lachlan has three. The goal was unguarded. Now it's manned, and it's manned by Jared McVeigh. How many times have we seen Sydney players lob the ball to advantage into their forward 50 to a play over the top of a teammate's head or to the advantage side, as, as Michael's called plenty of times tonight? They are a very well-drilled team. They've got systems in their forward line that I don't think West Coast have ever had. McVeigh edging out a little, opening it up, making no mistake. The margin 54, McVeigh's second goal. Like Leo Barry, gets himself tied up at times as he tries to get onto that left foot. Richards now, Jude Bolton again for O'Loughlin. Body work too strong Lachlan. for Spanger. Well, we've seen him do it a couple of times on Spanger. Not critical of the kid because he's uh, first game. But you'll just see a little bit of a touch by O'Loughlin. There it is. Just gets him off balance and uses his strength to just hold his ground and let the ball come onto him. What a way to learn in your first game though, Rob. Yeah, it's pretty tough, well, isn't it? It is, no, especially though, with the ball. It? Well, the ball's coming down very quick too. They're one-on-ones. You go down the other end, they've got four Sydney players jumping up against one and go down the other end, there's a one-on-one. -on -one. Pretty tough. 274th game for the Bloods. Club record holder, Michael O'Loughlin. Kicks his fourth of the night. Another good night. A job well done. No one wants to waste three months and then have the chance for it to happen again. So, I mean, if it can work, then I'm sure it'll change the face of what we do with ACLs in the future. You've had a pretty good look at Sydney, Vossi. But for an errant kick in their first match against St Kilda, they could be four zip. They take on Geelong down at Skilled Stadium. 
Here's their next four, Rob. What are your thoughts? Well, let's have a look at that. They've got uh, Geelong, Kangaroos, Bulldogs and Essendon. Well, without Barry Hall, of course, we're presuming that he's not going to be there. I would have loved to have seen them contest with Barry Hall there because I reckon the Swans are ready for that challenge. Clever mark by Barlow. Hall giving him a call. Barlow not ready. Hall's opponent against the Cats has been Matty Scarlett, hasn't it, over the, over the recent times? With, I, I would say, Scarlett taking the honours more times than not. And he was best on ground today, Scarlett. So Barlow from just inside 50. Good launch. Lovely effort. And another one of the Swans youngsters makes his mark. Barry Hall misses Tim. Uh, every chance Nick Davis will come into this Sydney team. I understand he kicked eight goals in the uh, curtain raiser tonight. And he's been told, uh, we believe, he needs to work on his defensive skills to come back into this team. We certainly know he can kick goals and he did that tonight. So he may well come in and replace that man there. And I think Nick's granddad's coming up. Oh, the oh, Barry Hall has hurt his wrist against the hoarding here. Gee, this is another controversial incident of uh, the hoarding's been involved. Well, he's actually oh, gone through the hoarding and into the... Um, he's broken it. Well, let's hope he hasn't broken his wrist as well, or his arm, but... Jeez. How close Paul was his head? Off. How close was his head to the iron bar? Well, it, oh, well, it did, it did it. And he's done some damage to that bar, too. And he oh, split his head open, too. Look, Rob, he split his head open and hurt his wrist. That, well, that's very controversial. They do their best, the AFL, to um, protect the players with all the uh, defensing, but that was just too close for comfort. A win for Hanson to Adam Selwood. Leo Barry was held by McKinley. It is Sydney's ball. What an eventful night this has been. He's, uh, he could have broken his wrist here. He certainly split his head. Jeez, that's dangerous, isn't it? Oh, jeez, he did hard. Oh, that was nasty. I think you were saying earlier, Vossi, that uh, you're presuming he's not going to be playing for a few weeks. And I can imagine there will be people of, uh, of a particular persuasion who will feel we're, we're judging Paul. But, I mean, we have to make a judgment about what we've seen based on what we know of the game. And... Uh, what was absolutely clear cut tonight. Here's Barlow again, and he kicks his second goal for this final quarter. And the Swans post the 100. Ashley Hansen. Now, is that fifth? Slipping the clutches of Ted Richards. It's almost, tonight. almost occasions where Kerr has almost needed to take on more than just Jack, though. He's almost had two or three different players at different times who have been willing to cover for him. And that's just great teamwork. Curse. Bombs on inside 50. And again, Swans have numbers at the ball. They just will not give anything away tonight. Bit of tunnel ball played there. Lynch got the handball out. McKinley for his fourth. Oh, well played. Is. Well done. Oh, CB winning in the ruck. Marston tried to escape, couldn't. Seabee, Stengline, couldn't escape either. No one's been able to escape. The mighty Swans who score a 62-point win. And they're a very formidable team again in 2008.